From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of Hot Chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Well, thank you, Bob Allen, for that wonderful introduction. That is my friend, Bob Allen, the voice of the Rick Altizer Show. And I'd like to welcome you here today. I'm very excited about my guest today. My guest today is someone very special to me. He's my very own son, Dave Altizer. Say hi, Dave. Hi. That's my boy. Uh, Dave is a very talented filmmaker here in Nashville. I know you're saying, okay, yeah, sure you're going to say that. He's your son. Of course you're going to say that. But I don't know. He's worked for people like Newsboys, Lady Annabellum, uh, the American Idol winner Chris Allen, One Republic, Chris Tomlin, you might have heard of a few of those guys. He's also uh, done uh, missionary work, film work all over the world, Kenya, Nicaragua, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Guatemala. And next week, my guest is uh, Steve Taylor, recording artist, uh, director, and uh, music producer. And uh, Steve actually has worked with Dave and said... uh, his exact quote was, your son's very talented. So uh, it's not just me. Steve is very talented. I love Steve. It's not just me. There are people in town who uh, say the same thing about my son. Anyway, I'm excited to have him here. He's a young filmmaker. And if you have someone that you know or love, maybe in your home, who is uh, wanting to do film work, wanting to go into that field, this is a great, uh, a great segment for them. And if uh, they miss it this week listening on the radio, you can go to rickaltizer.com, my website, and download this and share with your friends or give them the link. So uh, anyway, Dave, we're going to talk about uh, filmmaking and uh, how you got into it. Can we just kind of do that? Let's transition. How did you, as a young teenager, transition into doing film work? Well, it all started with animation. I started out doing um, hand-drawn animation in the computer when I was about 14, 15 years old. And um, with the help of you and mother, uh, you got me software and a little Wacom tablet for Christmas instead of a toy. And that really encouraged me to uh, to pursue that field. Um, I got into animation and then I met a friend, his name is Jeffrey Holland at church, and he invited me to film videos for a youth camp. Um, like it's just a big church youth camp. And, uh, the first day went by and I filmed everything and gave the footage to Jeffrey. And he looked at me and he said, wow, that was, you got some really good stuff. I'm real impressed. Would you like to do more of this? And I said, absolutely. I love it. And so, uh, we became good friends and, uh, Jeffrey owned a wedding film company after the youth camp was over, he needed some help for a wedding. And so he asked me because we recently worked together, if I'd be interested in filming a wedding, I said, sure. I've never done one before, but let's do it. And uh, so he gave me a camera and threw me out there. I was all by myself because he was double booked. That's why he needed me. He he was filming his own wedding and I I was filming the other one. Uh, And I was completely by myself. I had another shooter with me, but I was the lead shooter, even though I had zero experience. And so I apologize for that couple out there because I'm sure the footage was terrible. But but it really taught me a lot. Taught me how to think on my feet, how to, to be quick. And uh, that branched off into doing a lot more weddings. In fact, I've done over 300 videos uh, for wedding wedding videos over the last five, six years now. And uh, that's really how I cut my teeth in the, the professional field of video. Um, and I tell a lot of up-and-coming filmmakers to, uh, to do that. I, I actually highly recommend it. I think even if you're in school or if you're not sure if you want to go to school or I think it's a great way to just get into doing video professionally right away because no matter what the economy is, wealthy people are always going to have daughters who need to get married. And so uh, it's a very great way to make some money, but also it's a wonderful way to learn how to tell a story that's the same every time. And so no matter what happens, no matter what the couple is, sure, they have different personalities, but the storyline is always the exact same. They get ready, the anticipation, and then the big moment. And then a celebration. It's always the exact same. And after doing 300 of them, you get kind of tired of that same story. At this point, now I can really do a wedding in my sleep. And uh, I think that's just a really helpful thing to have because it teaches you how to be quick and how to be efficient with your time and how to nail those shots. And I've met a lot of people who went to film school, went the traditional route, and they tell me, like, how do you 
shoot weddings, I would just be so stressed out. And I'm quite like my feeling is quite the opposite. I, I'm not very stressed about it at all because it's um, I just have so much experience. I think uh, it's a great way to get started. Well, we're going to leave weddings, although uh, two years ago you had your own wedding. I did. And uh, you gave me a wonderful gift. You gave me a wonderful daughter-in-law, Laura. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Laura is amazing. And our own wedding was so much fun. And being in the industry obviously really helped because uh, we were able to get a lot of things uh, from my friends that I've met over the years. And so we had a great time. So Aerial footage, you know, drones yeah. in the sky. It was a great wedding. All my shot. groomsmen were, uh, were wedding video uh, makers. So uh, <laughs> while they were posing for pictures, they were also flying drones. <laughs> Talk to me about how you transitioned uh, starting out in the wedding industry, which is a great way to tell a story. It's run and gun. You're, you're moving fast. You, you got to get the shot. It's got to be right. You get one shot to do it. You can't go, hey, guys, could you do that, uh, exactly. that, those vows again? I, my, I was a little out of focus. You, 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 you have to do it right, uh, which teaches you great skills. And then from there, you transition to going into missionary work. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I was 19 years old. I was still living at home. Uh, so you know that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, at the time, the, the, the book by David Platt called Radical came out, and I got a copy of it, and I was reading it. And um, it really resonated with me. He talked about the Great Commission and just went into detail about that. And for some reason, it just never clicked with me that the, the Great Commission was so important as Christians to follow. Um, it, you would think that the last thing that Jesus says to humanity would be something that we all would really take to heart, but it's something that uh, isn't really preached on a lot and something that I just didn't think about. And what Jesus said is, go and make disciples of all nations. And then he ascended to heaven. That was literally the, some of the last words he ever said to humanity before he went to heaven. And uh, it just really clicked. And so I got on my knees that night. It was late, like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And I prayed and asked God to give me the ability to go to all nations and to make disciples of nations. And and I really meant not just America, but I really felt it in my heart. Like, I, I want to be able to serve you wherever you take me, all nations. And uh, so I went to sleep and uh, woke up the next morning, not even 24 hours later, and my friend who's... Uh, a professional uh, magician and evangelist, Brock Gill, uh, called me and he asked me if I'd want to go to Africa and shoot a documentary for a missionary. This is the next day. Not even 24 hours later. It was the next morning. So it was about 12 hours later. Um, and of course I said yes. And I told him the whole story that, you know, the night before I prayed. And, and so I think um, God is all powerful, all knowing. And, um, but it's funny how he wants us to pray and he wants us to be willing to go. And it was almost like he was, he had basically everything lined up and ready to go. He was just waiting on me to, um, to, to ask for it. And, uh, and so I asked and, and he gave it to me like the next day. And so I had five weeks to save up some money and go out there. And I had a really nice Mustang at the time. I had a lot of pride in it and I just needed a, I just needed $2,000 to, to go to this trip. And I felt God tell me to sell the Mustang. And I told, I told God prior to that, I said, I'll do anything, you know, Lord, just give me the option, give me the ability to go on this trip. I know it's from you. And he, he told me to sell the Mustang. And I said, anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of pride in it. So I sold the car and I, I saved up enough cash so that when I was able to come home, I could buy a, a cheap car to get around. But that selling the Mustang got me to Africa for the first time. And from there, um, I got other opportunities to go to Guatemala, Haiti, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, uh, working for uh, Food for the Hungry, Compassion International, lots of different nonprofits and missionaries all over the world. And uh, I really noticed that there's this, I think in this culture, in this generation, uh, we tell stories through video more than anything else right now. If you go on any website, the f there's no articles anymore talking about the company. There's a video right at the front page because um, this generation just <laughs> is kind of lazy and wants to watch videos and not read. And uh, and so I noticed that God was really using the videos that I was making to really raise a lot of money. I mean, um, I got a, some feedback from a company in Haiti that said that the video has raised over a million dollars for their organization. Oh, praise the Lord. So I've seen a lot of just very instant 
re- uh, response to the videos. And that first year of my, you know, when I was 19, I just really learned a lot and saw some very literal things that God was doing in those countries. And it gave me a lot of perspective. And uh, I really think every believer needs to, to do that because it just, you learn so much. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM, Nashville. What were some of the reasons why missionaries need someone to come do videos for them? Well, I noticed one thing, that missionaries are very great at the one thing that, that God's called them to do, which is share the gospel. But they're not very good graphic designers or photographers or filmmakers. In fact, if you go on their website, usually it looks like they designed it in the 90s with you know, a computer from 20 years ago. And um, I, I love making videos, and I feel like that's my service to the kingdom, is to try to make a living doing other things, but to serve the church and to serve the kingdom of God and to make disciples of all nations with um, the videos. I remember I was struggling with not feeling self-worth and feeling like the videos I was doing weren't impacting people. And I remember I kind of had a vision one night and I saw all these faces and it was like, it was like a, when you win the lottery and all, you know, a bunch of coins come out of the machine or whatever. It was just like all these faces. And I feel like God was showing me, even though I'm making a video and putting it on the internet and that's kind of all I ever do with it. I, I don't see eyes that are watching it or see the results from it. I just kind of make it and put it up online and just whatever happens, happens. He kind of taught me that the videos that that I was making were impacting all these people, people in those countries and people in America. And I'll never know the reach that they have. I mean, they could go on for years and years. Um, Some of the companies, again, because they're not very media focused are still using the videos I made four years ago. And so I think it's real important for anybody in the creative field to serve the church and to serve the kingdom with their talents for missionaries in particular, because they really need, they need it. We're a body and we need to all be a part of that body. Missionaries, as you said, do a, do a great job serving. They do a great job being missionaries, but sometimes fundraising can be, can be a challenge for them. Talk to me about uh, when you first went, one of your first trips to Kenya, Mm -hmm. about how he was needing to raise funds for uh, a vehicle? Yes, my uh, Don Babin, he's a missionary in Kenya. He goes to the Maasai Mara and evangelizes to the Maasai tribe. And he evangelized to them out in the bush in the middle of the jungle, in the middle of the Sahara. And uh, he was having to pay thousands of dollars for a driver to drive him around. And so he told me right after my first trip um, that he needs to purchase a, a, a Land Rover. And it was going to be about like twenty to $30,000 to get one that, that was, you know, good enough for the type of off-road that he was going to do. And uh, so I made a video using some of the footage I got of us traveling around. And um, we kind of made a video very specific for that need. And he went to one church and raised all the money. Just It was just a normal-sized church. It wasn't like a mega church or anything. They just were really impacted by it. And, I mean, obviously God moved in that way. But the video really, I, that, in that moment, I noticed that video has a power to it. It's uh, emotional. It can really show people things in a way that photo and word can't do because it really puts you in wherever that video is. You know, if you watch a romantic movie or something, it's really easy for you to get emotional at a movie. And those are actors playing completely fake roles and reading a script. And it's not even real. And you're crying about it. Imagine real life things and capturing it in a cinematic way and using editing to move people in a positive way with real things. What have you learned yourself just personally from doing these missionary trips? Well, it, again, it just gave me a lot of perspective as far as growing up in America and understanding how blessed we really are. I've heard that my whole life, but once you go and see how honestly the rest of the world is, even including like Europe and other countries who are more socialist than us, I do think we need to use the gift that God's given us, which is the fact that we have financial means, that we have the ability to praise Him uh, and not go to jail and use that to, to go to all nations, honestly. 
I think God moves in very literal ways and I've seen things happen, miracles and signs and very specific things uh, in these countries. And I think God does that because um, for those people, it makes sense to them. It really, the gospel really clicks uh, for people uh, in other countries, probably more so than in America, because their lives are very simple. They have their cattle and they have their home and their family and that's it. And when the gospel is presented to them, it, it makes a lot of sense because if they weren't saved prior to that, um, when they hear the gospel and understand that that you're a sinner and that you need Christ in order to be one with God, and these things were all, you know, your animals, your cattle, your family are all from God and you're a child of God, um, it really clicks for them. It makes a lot of sense because, you know, it, their lives are very simple. And a lot of them respond really well to it. I've just seen some amazing things over there, and it's really refreshing. And I like to continue to go once or twice a year now. Uh, I remember I stopped going on trips when uh, I first met my wife, and I wondered why God wasn't giving me opportunities to go anymore. And he really told me, it's because you need to work on your relationship with your wife first. And then, you know, you got the rest of your life to do other things. But um, so that was just a fun thing that God spoke to me. And so it was a great growing experience for you. I, I firsthand saw that, saw, uh, watched you go. Um, now, you don't make income when you when, – uh, I've noticed that you, you have to work with the newsboys, with these other, you know, doing mm-hmm. commercials and doing things that are – where you can generate income because when you go and do these missions trips, you don't make money. Is that correct? Exactly. And that's why it worked much better when I was 19 at home and now I'm a single. <laughs> <laughs> There was a time where I was going on so many trips and doing so many things, and God honestly opened that up. He, Like I said, it was because I was single. I was 19 at home, and God really just gave me all these crazy opportunities. And uh, there was about a, a year and a half where I just went all these places. I was thinking at the time that I wanted to start a company because I was doing so much of it and make money. And the truth is, as missionaries have budget sometimes, they, they raise money and Sometimes they have some budget on the side to pay for media or whatever. But I just felt wrong about charging $3,000 for a video from a missionary who could feed 1,000 people for $3,000. And uh, and so God really, <laughs> I started, I actually did start the company and it failed. Uh, <laughs> and so I said, you know what, I'm just going to focus on this being my service, my the way that I serve God and the same way that a musician would lead worship or somebody who loves children would volunteer at the nursery or, you know, whatever. I just feel like that's my part of the body is to make videos for nonprofits and missionaries and churches. And it doesn't have to be overseas. I've done stuff for a homeless shelter in in Nashville called the the Nashville Rescue Mission. It's an amazing Christ-centered organization. I just feel like that's the one thing that God's called me to do, and I don't think I'll ever stop. It is an amazing thing. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio, 89.1 FM, 1160 AM, Nashville. And I know you're going to be traveling uh, in just a few weeks to go to Mexico to film uh, Newsboys and Mark Lowry. Part of that uh, work also, for those who don't know, uh, I, I did a movie with Shonda Pierce, and David uh, here was the director of photography for that movie. And we just got back this week from uh, Georgia and Alabama filming uh, the second movie. That's right. It's the sequel. Sequel. We've got to have a sequel. And so uh, uh, tell us a little bit about, David, about your involvement in going to the big screen. How, what, what's, what's the difference there for you? Well, honestly, all three of those things you listed are documentary event style shooting type projects. So it all kind of is still part of the same family. That's part of the reason why the mission videos were so great for me is because I had so much experience in weddings. And honestly, that same type of training applied to that. When you're shooting a documentary, it's also very similar. Um, however, this time around, we, we have budget. And so it's really great to hire people that know what they're doing to, to help make the, the movie happen smoother and more professionally. We're lighting things better. We're uh, using good quality audio systems where we've got cinematic tools and things like that. And so uh, those are all luxuries to have for sure for this uh, new Shonda movie. But I'm always learning, always growing. And um, I think it's important for especially Christians to do things with excellence because it's a great way to share the gospel. People can ask you, why are, you know, why do you have such a good attitude? Why is it that 
um, you're so good, you know? And it's like, well, honestly, it's, I, I've worked hard, but God's given me this gift and God's allowed me to do this. And that's why. Let me tell you more about it, you know? So I was wondering what advice then you might have for a young person, a teenager, high school student, possibly uh, someone just going into college who might be thinking about this kind of career, doing filmmaking, whether it be editing or filming, what kind of advice would you would you give to them right now? Go do stuff. There's nothing keeping you from making a film right now. You can take your phone, go to a local business, ask them to film behind the scenes of them working, do a quick interview, make a video together, do it for free. Now they've got a video to put on Facebook to advertise their small business. And now you're a professional commercial person making videos for for professional companies. All of a sudden, overnight, for free with your iPhone, you just made a video professionally. There's nothing keeping you from doing anything anymore. The barrier of entry now is really go out and get a camera and start making stuff because you can shoot a movie and edit it on your iPhone at this point. It's not sure it's not going to look exactly like a film, but that's just an example. I mean, a cinematic looking image is really obtainable with a $5,000 camera and lighting and simple things like that. Again, obviously, film student or somebody in Hollywood would say, well, no, you need millions of dollars. And that is true, of course, if you're shooting the next Iron Man movie. But it's a great time for up and coming filmmakers. I, I say go get a camera, go ask your local, you know, wedding film company for if they need any help or assistance and just start learning and getting out there and just doing things and meeting people. And if you're going to college for film or video, you need to also be doing video while you're going to school. Otherwise, you'll come out of school with a degree and zero experience. I think it's really a great time, though, for up-and-coming filmmakers to just experiment and explore. And like I said, you can make a YouTube video with your iPhone and it could go viral. You never know. It's a, it's a really crazy time because the whole world with the internet can see your video. There's no guarantee that you'll get millions of views if you just make a video and post it. But if you're creative enough and you come up with a great idea, there is a chance that you could have a lot of eyes on that. And um, it's a great time for up and coming people. I know you made a uh, a documentary, short documentary. It was a Vimeo uh, staff pick, and you got a lot of uh, views with that. So if people wanted to see some of your work, some of your uh, missionary work, wedding work, uh, stuff you've done with uh, recording artists, where would they uh, be able to see that online? It's at my website, DaveAltizerFilms.com. That's a plural films at the end. Uh, and it's spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. And you already know that if you've listened to this show. That's right. Same last name, Dave. AltizerFilms.com, and you can see more of his stuff. Well, Dave, I want to thank you so much for being on the show today and for sharing with us and giving some advice to young young filmmakers. I really like that specific advice. In any city across America, somebody's making wedding videos. They're going to spend money on weddings. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the economy's bad, they're still going to have a wedding. They're going to film it. So just about any place you are, there's going to be somebody doing wedding videos that's a great opportunity. Call them up. Hey, I'll work for free. It's a great way to get hands-on and kind of learn all the aspects of filmmaking. So that's a great suggestion. Or to, if you have any friends that are getting married, film it for free for them. Lots of great opportunities there. That's a great way to break in. I want to thank you for listening. You can. Uh, I would love to connect with you. You can go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Rick Altizer Show. Also, you can uh, look me up on the internet, rickaltizer.com. That's A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. Also, if you contact me at the top of the page, there's a little contact button. Uh, I will give you a free scripture memory album. If you like music that sounds like the Beatles and the Beach Boys and Elton John and ELO and Queen and those kinds of that kind of music, you will like this record. And it's yours for free by just contacting me. I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Dave, for being here. And thank you for listening to Bot Radio. And thank you, uh, Paul Winkler, for sponsoring the show. Within four days after my show first aired, he uh, is sponsoring us. And that is helping uh, this station keep gospel-focused programming on the air. And it's also helping me on the air. So that's Paul Winkler, the Investor Coach. Thank you, Paul, for your support. And thank you for listening. And I'll see you next week when we interview Steve Taylor. Let now some word proceed from your mouth